Hey, it's Dave from the Camera Store. Today we're going to talk about what it's like shooting with some budget-friendly lenses. On the market today, there are so many options for cameras and lenses to choose from. And here at TCS TV, we've been doing a lot of reviews of some recent lenses, but a lot of them are very expensive. And inevitably, in the comments section down below, we have, when are you going to talk about more affordable lenses, more budget-friendly lenses? Well, it had me sort of thinking, what are our options out there? So in putting together this week's episode, I kind of came up with this premise. Would I rather have one Canon R5 or a Canon R, 24 105, a 100 400, and an 800 mm lens, all for the same price as just the body of the R5 alone. Today I went with Canon because they have a great series of lenses, but they have a very clear distinction between their entry level lenses and the equivalents in their higher end lenses. But what are my trade offs? What am I sacrificing? What am I gaining when I'm using this? I think you might be surprised with some of the results. First thing I want to talk about is build quality. Now a great case in point between entry level lenses and their higher end counterparts is with Canon's 24-105s. There's a 24-105 variable aperture lens and also a 24-105 f4 L series lens. Now the difference between these two is quite significant when it comes to the price point. When you hold them both in your hands you're going to feel that one feels significantly heavier, much better built and certainly a higher quality product overall. Now the thing is, I don't mind a lighter weight lens, I don't even mind some plastic lenses. These days they're built fairly decent and they do have some environmental sealing, but the biggest thing is that they're not considered weather sealed lenses. This is a huge factor for a lot of people. I've been caught in a lot of snowstorms, I've been caught in rain, and I never have to worry about it if I'm shooting with a weather sealed lens. Take a look at this clip here from a previous episode where we are drenched in snow and I have no qualms or concerns about it at all. Now if your style of photography doesn't involve rain and snow and really super dusty areas then the entry level lenses certainly work just fine and there's not a problem with that. But if you are a more demanding user and you find yourself in the rain and in the snow and in bad weather all the time there's a certain peace of mind that comes with a higher quality lens that has weather resistance built into it. Now behind me is my arch nemesis, the Canada Goose. They guys will pluck your eyes out, trust me on this. However, this is a good time to talk about autofocus performance of lenses. And here's where I'm actually quite pleasantly surprised by this because I'm not finding a massive difference between the autofocus performance. For general purpose photography, all these lenses keep up really quite well. Take into account this combination here. This is the Canon 100-400 variable aperture lens versus the 1-500 L-series lens. So it's three times the price for the L-series lens, but take a look at the autofocus focus performance. As I'm walking towards the camera here, you can easily see they can both keep up with my progress. Now I've been trying to shoot birds in flight, but I'm mostly getting birds sitting and eating, so I'm not getting the same kind of action. But I will tell you, in time I find that certainly the higher end lenses do acquire focus just slightly quicker. Now you're going to find this in other brands as well, but I don't know if it justifies the price point for the performance. We are certainly getting some very good performance on entry level lenses across the board these days. So we've talked about build quality, we've talked about the autofocus, but let's get down to like the brass tacks. Let's get down to the image quality. This is what everybody really cares about at the end of the day. How good are my images with these lenses? Now, there's a few things to kind of take into mind. These days we're seeing better optics than we've ever seen before. Even at the entry level point, a lot of these lenses perform exceptionally well, well above their price point. I'm really quite impressed with them. If you take a look at these examples here, it's not nearly the difference I was expecting to see shooting the 24-105 variable aperture lens versus the 24-105. Both are able to produce some really nice crisp shots. And the same goes for the 1-400 versus the 1-500. We're seeing some really nice clear shots with this. Now things that I am finding is that vignetting, for instance, is certainly more pronounced with the lesser quality lens than we do with the higher end lens. Contrast is a little nicer with the higher end lens as well, but it's not anything that we can't correct for in post-production. For me, the biggest difference you're going to find shooting these different lenses is the quality of the image, especially when it comes to background blur and having to deal with a variable aperture lens. In the case of the 24-105 STM lens from Canon, it's a 4.5 to 7.1 aperture, where the 24-105 L-series lens, the much more expensive counterpart, is a constant f4. So what does this mean in the real world? Well, we get a nicer background blur for shooting with an f4 lens. Take a look at these two examples here. I'm probably standing about 20 feet away from the wall, both shooting wide open as much as we can at 105. Now if you look at the difference between a 105 millimeters at 7.1 versus the L-series lens at f4, you can see how much more pleasing the background blur is. 
So is that deal breaker? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. There are ways of kind of cheating that a little bit. Take a look at this example here where we use the exact same lens, the 24 to 105 f4 to 7.1, but instead of standing 20 feet in front of the wall, I moved up another 10 or 15 feet. So now I'm about 30, 35 feet in front of the wall and you get a very similar look to that 24 to 105 at f4. The other sort of trade-off with shooting faster aperture lenses is a constant shutter speed. When I'm shooting the variable aperture lenses, I really need to watch my shutter speed because it's going to vary depending on how far I zoom my lens out. And that can really change the look of your image. Am I getting nice crisp shots or am I starting to have a little more suspect shutter speeds as I zoom out? These are things I need to kind of take into account. Suddenly with a variable aperture lens, I need to boost my ISO up a little bit more than I might be comfortable with. I don't have to do that with a higher quality lens with a constant aperture. So I've had a pretty good time here comparing sort of the more budget-friendly lenses versus their higher-end counterparts and seeing is there enough of a difference there. And I think you sort of have to decide that on your own as you try these things out. I mean, we talked about the autofocus speed. They're relatively comparable. It's shockingly good how close they can be. We talked about the build quality and how important weather sealing is to you or not. And we also talked about the image quality and the depth of field and the bokeh. And is that going to be enough for you? Can you work with those parameters? Is it a limiting factor? Or is price the biggest factor between these guys? Now today, two of the lenses were zoom lenses, of course, so it kind of covered all my bases, but you can do the same thing with prime lenses. Maybe that's a future episode. I really want to encourage you to take a look at your various camera systems and see what other lenses are available. Don't always be starstruck by the top end lenses. Certainly they are the better performing lenses, but is the margin enough to justify the price point? I want to know what you guys think. Are there some lenses in a camera system that are absolute gems for the price point? Make sure you leave comments down below. Follow us both on Instagram and please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. We'll catch you again next time. Let's be quiet because I'm photographing a very rare yellow-breasted hip waiter construction worker. Hey, thanks for sticking around and watching this episode. If you want to check out more of our recent content, click up here. And if you're a Canadian, you want to shop local, check out thecamerastore.com down here.